When you buy commercial or rental residential property, you must depreciate it beginning at the time you place it in service as a rental. But the land value is not depreciable, and some of the closing costs are. I created a video that explains how to determine the land value so that you can find the depreciable cost not including land. It's been helpful to a lot of people in determining that value. One of my viewers asked me to also do a video on which items from the closing statement can be included as well in the depreciable cost basis and which cannot. So according to the IRS documentation, the following items are some of the settlement fees or closing costs that you can include in the basis of your property for depreciation. Abstract fees, charges for installing utility services, legal fees, including title search and preparation of the sales contract and deed, recording fees, surveys, transfer taxes, owner's title insurance, and any amount that the seller owes that you agree to pay, such as back taxes or interest, recording or mortgage fees, charges for improvements or repairs, and sales commissions. The following items are some settlement fees and closing costs that you cannot include in the basis of the property for depreciation. Casualty insurance premiums, rent for occupancy of the property before closing, charges for utilities or other services related to occupancy of the property before closing, charges connected with getting a loan. That could be points, discount points or loan origination fees, mortgage insurance premiums, loan assumption fees, fees for an appraisal required by a lender, fees for refinancing a mortgage. Please let me know in the comments if this is helpful to you. If you'd like to learn more about cost segregation, 179D tax credits, or R&D tax deductions, please reach out to me directly. After all, it's your money. Keep more of it.